help, uh, along with John Cohen, former counterterrorism coordinator at the Department of Homeland Security. Thanks to you both. And Pierre, let me let me go to you first. This really has Washington on edge. Martha, it's a tense moment. There were two signs of it this week. The Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson, expanded security at airports and also at federal buildings. And the FBI director himself participated in a teleconference call to exhort vigilance. And, and John Cohen, let, let's address this issue of, of sleeper cells in the U.S. Obviously, they're trying to hide. So how do you go about finding them? How do you track somebody like that? Well, several ways. The, the FBI and law enforcement have thousands of investigations across the country that are open today. The bigger concern are those people who haven't risen to the attention of law enforcement. They've been discreet in their communications. They haven't been spending a lot of time um, training with, uh, with recruiters or, or meeting with recruiters. Though, that's where the difficulty lies. And that's where strategies that involve working with local communities um, together so that we can identify people who are exhibiting the warning signs and take steps to deal with those people, that's so, important. So federal agencies dealing with local communities, this doesn't seem like an especially good time for that to happen, is it? No, I mean, I'm hearing from police officials around the country, the relationship with the federal government um, is, is unusually strained at this point in time. Uh, However, uh, the FBI is working closely. They're sharing more information than ever with local authorities. They're providing more training than ever with local authorities. They're working to ensure local, uh, local jurisdictions are ready to deal with active shooter situations. Um, we'll just have to keep working on it. And, and Pierre, I, I, I was struck this week by the, the issues in the D.C. metro, the subway here. We weren't ready for that. A woman died in that subway because it filled with smoke others injured so are we ready for an attack here if something happens well the short answer in dc in that case the answer was no and i know federal authorities i spoke to were mortified quite frankly that they were not able to get in there and get those people out more quickly huge issue and martha going back to one point that you made about how you track these people the fbi has been watching and monitoring travel patterns also they're uh, very robust on the internet looking at who's posting these radical messages online I know you'll both be back. Thank you very much to both of you. So how can we stop the flow of recruits to extremist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS? This week, President Obama said Europe must do more to assimilate Muslims into mainstream society, something he says is happening here in the U.S. Let's bring in Farah Pandit, who served as the State Department's first ever special representative to Muslim communities. Thanks for being here. I, I want to start with a few statistics. 1.6 billion Muslims, a quarter of the planet, 62% are under the age of 30, 2.75 million live in the U.S. These, this is the pool from which they recruit, especially those young people. It, absolutely. And, but it's not just here in the United States or in Europe. It's all around the world. That's a central point. They're looking at communities of young Muslims that have grown up in a post-9-11 world who are experiencing something very particular to this generation. And we need to understand that. I Ideas don't have borders. It's all around the world, and these are digital natives, so they are connected to each other. But here's the deal. This issue, this threat of recruitment, the vast majority of recruiting is a, poss is a solvable problem. It is possible to stem the vast majority of recruitment. Give me some very practical things that we could do that we are not doing. Sure. Well, first of all, we have to understand that um, we need to be as serious about uh, stopping the ideology of the extremists as we are about fighting terrorists. And that means going back to the local level, understanding what's taking place outside side of government and upscaling the ideas that we hear on the ground with monies that do not come from government but come from philanthropists, that come from the private sector, they come from foundations. We need to be looking at the ideas that we are hearing will work. The second alternatives to what they're hearing well, from these we Al Qaeda at, and ISIS. We are, Martha, we are very comfortable with this issue of how to build preventative medicine uh, techniques. And we can do the similar thing here in this particular space. We need to prevent by a whole of community going after this problem. Great ideas. Thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Up next, Mike Huckabee, why he's taking on Beyonce and Jay-Z, and will he jump into the 2016 race? Our exclusive interview in just two minutes.